namo bhagavate vasudevaya vachit sasai Quachit sa sailan utpatya. Tayar deshan samachur nayat. Anartan sutaram beva. Yatraste mitraha hari. Quachit sa sailan upatya. Tardeshan sam samachurnayat. Anartan sutaram eva. Yatraste mitraha hari. Quachit sa sailan utpatya. Tardeshan samachurnayat. Anartan sutaram eva. Yatraste mitraha hari. Once, Once. Saha. Saha, he, he. Vavira. Vavira, Shailan, Shailan. Mountains. mountains, Utpatya, Utpatya. Tearing, up. tearing up, Tai, Tai. With, them. with them, Deshan, Deshan. all the kingdoms, kingdoms. Samachurnayat. He devastated. He devastated. Anartan, Anartan, the province of the Anarta people, Anarta people. in which Dwarka is situated. <coughs> Sutaram, Eva, Eva, especially. Is Yatra, Yatra, where Yatra. Aste, Aste is present. Is present. Mitra, of his friend, of his friend. Ha, ha, the killer, the killer. Hari, Hari Krishna. Krishna. Once Vivida tore up a number of mountains and used them to devastate all the neighboring kingdoms, especially the province of Anarta, wherein dwelt his friend's killer. Lord Hari. Kvachit samudra madhyasto dorbhyam utshipya taj jalam desam naga yuta prano velakule nyabanjayat. Another time he entered the ocean and with the strength of ten thousand elephants churned up its water with his arms and thus submerged the coastal regions. Ashramam Rishimukyanam Kritva Bhagna Vanaspatin Adu Sayach Chakrim Murtair Agnin Vaitanikam Kala the wicked ape tore down the trees and the hermitages of exalted sages and contaminated their sacrificial fires with his feces and urine. Purushan Yoshito Dripta Shmarbrid Droni Guhasusa Nikshipya Chapyadach Chailai Peshakardiva Kitakam. Just as a wasp imprisons smaller insects, he arrogantly threw both men and women into caves in a mountain valley 
and sealed the caves shut with boulders. Evam deshan viprakurvan dusayams chakulastriya surutvasu laditam gitam girim raivadhakam yayo. Once, while the Vida was thus engaged in harassing the neighboring kingdoms and polluting women of respectable families, he heard very sweet singing coming from the Raivataka, Raivataka mountain. So he went there. Tatra pasyad yadupatim ramam pushkaramalinam Sudarshaniya saravangam lalana yutamadyagam gayantam varunam varunim pitva madavivala lochanam vibrajamanam vapusa prabhinam ivavaranam. There he saw Sri Balaram the lord of the yadus, adorned with a garland of lotuses and appearing most attractive in every limb. He was singing amidst the crowd of young women, and since he had drunk Varuni liquor, his eyes rolled as if he were intoxicated. His body shone brilliantly as he belay, behaved like an elephant in rut. Dushta Saka Mriga Sakam Aruda Kampayam Druman Chakre Kila Kila Shabdam Atmanam Sampradarshayan. The mischievous ape climbed a tree branch and then revealed his presence by shaking the trees and making the sound kila kila. <laughs> Purport. The word saka mriga indicates that the ape dravida, like ordinary apes, was naturally inclined to climb trees. Srila Prabhupada writes, <clears throat> This gorilla, by the name Vivida, could climb up on the trees and jump from one branch to another. Sometimes he would jerk the branches, creating a particular type of sound, kila kila, so that Lord Balaram was greatly distracted from the pleasing atmosphere. Hare Krishna. We are reading today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 67, entitled Balaram Slays Vivida Gorilla. Texts 4 through 11. At the beginning of this chapter, we learn that Vivida was an associate of Hanuman and Sugriva in the history of Ramayan. And Valmiki Muni describes therein how he fearlessly, courageously fought with Ram against Ravana in order to rescue Sita. Mainda and Vivida, two brothers, were two of the most celebrated soldiers who fought with Ram. 
from Kishkinda Kshetra. And here we find that same Vividha acting as an enemy. And Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Aracharyas explain the important lesson for all of us of what happened to him and why. Dravido is so powerful. He was such a good fighter, and that was his profession. In other words, he was expert at his performing his duty. And because even though he was fighting on the side of Ram, he's a devotee, he became proud. And in that pride, he became disrespectful, perhaps envious of Lakshman. In the story of Ram, um, Lakshman is Ram's most intimate devotee. <coughs> Lakshman didn't ever want any position except to render loving service to Sri Ram. When Lord Ram was exiled to the forest by Kaikeyi, Lakshman would have it no other way except to be there, to serve. And it describes how he would make huts or little homes for Ram and Sita and Chitrakut. And he would sit outside and guard them throughout the day and night. In Panchavati, later became Nasik, he did the same. When Sita was, kept, was captured by Ravana, Lakshman was right at Ram's side at every step. So he was always the loving servant of Sri Ram. Although he's a manifestation of the Supreme Personality of God, he was playing the role of a devotee. And he was a very dear devotee. Just as Lord Nityananda Prabhu was to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And just as in most instances Lord Balaram was to Krishna. And it is said that Lakshman or Balaram is Guru Tattva, the original Guru, in the sense showing, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, showing the, um, the spirit of pure unallied devotional service through their activities. So Dvaveda, he was very much praised by the other monkey soldiers. He was very powerful, he was very skilled, he was quite famous for his abilities, and he was doing incredible service. But he was proud. And in that pride, he became envious of the affection he saw between Ram and Lakshman. He was seeing Lakshman in a very material way. And that is the great danger of pride. The great danger even of success. Padam padam yadvi padam natesham. There are dangers at every step in this material world. There's danger if we fail. There's danger if we succeed. There's danger if we're defeated. There's danger if we're victorious. There's danger if we're dishonored. There's danger if we're honored. 
There's danger if we lose, there's danger if we win. It's danger at every step. And that is why it is very important in the association of devotees to have very strong sadhana and a very hearing and chanting, understanding, you know, what is my position always? Ahankara vimudatma. So we do not fall victim to the false ego. <clears throat> because whether we're learned scholars or whether we're expert at our management or our whatever activities or service we're performing, if we become proud, if we look down upon others or we become envious of others, then we make aparad. And that offense, we become covered over. Krishna takes away his mercy when we make offenses to his devotees. So here is such a powerful example that even a great devotee like Viveda, he lost his intelligence because of his false pride and his offenses toward Lakshman. And here we find what happened is due to those offenses, he became attracted to the association of Narakasura, also known as Bhomasura. Bhomasura, in the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining to Murari Gupta, who's actually Hanuman, who was a very close associate of Vivida. <laughs> Everything is very interconnected, these pastimes. Lord Chaitanya comes to Murari Gupta or Hanumanji's house and reveals his form as Lord Varaha Dev. And Murari Gupta is worshipping him and honoring him and offering prayers. And then Lord Varaha speaks, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his form of Varaha, about the nature of his transcendental body and how he does not tolerate devotees who love and serve him. And he gave an example the example of Narakasura. He said, Narakasura was my son. He cited the example of how when Hiranyaksha caused the earth to be sunk under the water, Lord Varahadeva appeared and lifted the earth with his tusks. And when he touched Mother Earth, Bhumi Devi, he impregnated her with his own child. And she gave birth to Boma. And according to Lord Chaitanya in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Boma was instructed in religious and spiritual principles by the Lord himself. And he became a very great king. He was protecting the demigods and the gurus and the mystics and the sages. But then somehow or other, he came in the association of Banasura. And in that association, because Banasura was an envious person, he became proud and envious. Now, Banasura was not an ordinary person either. Bomasura, he was Boma, but he became Bomasura because he was affected by the association of Banasura. Bana was the son of Bali Maharaj, who happens to be the most illustrious example of Atmanavedanam, of the nine processes of devotional service. There is an example that we should follow in the footsteps of each 
for each of these nine processes. Sravanakirtana smarana bandhana pada sevana dasyade pujana sakijana atmani vedana. Parikshit Maharaj taught us hearing, Shukadev Goswami chanting, Prahlad Maharaj remembering. Atmani Vedana was Bali Maharaj. He surrendered everything to the Lord. His son was Bana. That means his great grandfather, the great grandfather of Bana Sura was Prahlad Maharaj. So there's two great Mahajans <laughs> who are his forefathers. But somehow or other, and Banasura was not an ordinary person. He was very powerful. He worshipped Lord Shiva, and he became a favorite of Lord Shiva and Parvati. He performed such incredible devotion, devotion and yagya to Lord Shiva. He got a thousand strong arms and used to play the drum. And he played his drums so expertly that Lord Shiva would dance to his drumming. Now, we have some drummers who might think that they're good drummers, but we don't see Lord Shiva coming to dance. <laughs> You have to really be a good drummer for Lord Shiva to come to dance to your drumming. And Banasura, he was, he's the great-grandson of Prahlad. He's the son of Bali Maharaj. He's a favorite of Lord Shiva and Parvati. And also, later on, his daughter Usha married Krishna's grandson, Aniruddha. Krishna married Rukmini, Prajumana was their son. From Prajumana, Aniruddha was born, and Aniruddha was Banasura's father-in-law. But somehow or other, he was very proud because he had all those strong arms and everything. <laughs> and he, he fought against Krishna. And that was one of the most historic fights because Lord Shiva actually came and fought against Krishna huh? to help his devotee, Banasura. So he was obviously quite influential. And it was due to Banasura's association that Boma became an Asura even after being instructed and trained by Lord Varahadev, Vishnu himself, his father, and Mother Earth, Bhumi. And we read in Srimad Bhagavatam in the commentaries that Bhomasura became so, because he had such powers, due to that bad association, he became so corrupt he, had, he was kidnapping all these young ladies and holding them hostage. 16,000. And then he went to attack the demigods and defeated them. And he stole Varuna's white umbrella, which was the insignia of his powers and his position. And then he he took by force Aditi's earrings. Now some of you ladies may think, so what? You know, she lost her earrings. She's the, she's the mother of all the devas. So she obviously had more earrings. <laughs> <laughs> but these earrings were really special. <laughs> they must have been. And <laughs> And it was also a, really an insult to the demigods. It wasn't, wasn't just the, the value of the earrings, it was the prestige of the demigods. If you take something from Indra, that's one thing. But to take something from his mother? <laughs> that's really, any, if you can't protect your own mother, that's really a terrible insult. 
So Indra was so disturbed, he went to Dwarka and, and explained to Krishna that this Bomasura, he took Aditi's earrings <laughs> and he conquered us and he took Varuna's umbrella and there's nothing we can do. So Krishna went. Now please understand, this is his own son in the sense that he was born of, Bo of Bhumi and Varahadev. So he took Satyabhama with him, because Satyabhama is the, she's, her expansion is Bhumi, Mother Earth. So if Satyabhama gave him the blessings to fight against Bhoma, then Krishna had no problem doing this. So on Garuda they went together. And Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna book gives graphic description about, about this incredible um, pastime. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he tells that Narakasura or Bomasura was my own son who was loved by his mother Bhumi. But still, because he was envious of devotees, I had to kill him. And the Lord was using this as an example of how careful we have to be not to be envious of devotees. It's not that necessarily that we have the relevance where Krishna is going to come and kill us. In the form of time, he's going to do it anyway. But what's important to us is it displeases Krishna so much. Mad bhakta puja pyadika. Krishna says, one who worships my devotee is more dear to me than one who worships me. Now from that principle, we can understand the other side, that one who offends my devotee is, displeases me more than if, you dis, than if you offend me directly. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was offended, but he would just take a very humble position. But when Lord Nityananda Prabhu or Srivas Thakur were offended, he took very, very strong action. Lord Chaitanya told Jagai and Madhai that if you offend me, that's not so bad. But if you offend Lord Nityananda, if you offend my devotee, that's even more painful, displeasing to me. So Bomasura, he was son of Bhumi and Varahad. But because of the association of Banasura, who was the son of Bali and great grandson of Prahlad, he became envious. Not only does this story show very clearly the importance of not offending devotees, but it shows us the influence of association. Rupa Goswami tells the basis, the foundation of our spiritual development is our association. Satsang. When we associate with enlightened people, Mahatsevam Dwaram Ahuravam Uktes Tamodwaram Yoshita Sanghi Sangam. Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, tells that by associating with great souls and serving them, the doors to liberation open. But when we associate with people who are envious or are too much attached to egoistic pursuits and greed and, and Sense gratification, tamodvaram, then the doors to ignorance are open, the doors to bondage. So it is very, very important who we associate with. 
even if we're Krishna's son, if we have the wrong association, our devotional attitude can be spoiled. When we value the association of devotees, then we get the true benefit. So, Tvivida, a great devotee of Lord Ram, but somehow or other, because of false pride, he made Guru Aparad, Vaishnava Aparad. Even in the course of his service, this is very um, instructive. Even in the course of our service, we shouldn't think that just because I'm serving, I'm protected from Vaishnava Aparad. We have to be very careful. And due to that offense, he became attracted to the association of a very, very powerful person. Banasura, and ultimately from being a king who was protecting the demigods, he became an enemy of the demigods. From being a protector of devotees, he became an enemy of devotees. And this, and this could happen. So now here he is, Vivida. And Krishna himself, he liberated Bomasura. Why? Bomasura, he stole the deity's earrings, he stole Varuna's umbrella, and he captured 16,000 innocent, beautiful princesses. He was really extremely um, disturbing. And Krishna came with Satyabhama and Garuda and gave him a chance, just give back the princesses, give back the earrings, and you're my son, I'll take care of you. But he fought against Krishna. He sent Mura and so many demons to fight against Krishna, and then he personally came out himself to fight. So he was a rascal. <laughs> Krishna gave him every chance to be happy, but he was so arrogant and so um, attached. So here is Vavida. He was so angry at Krishna for killing his friend. In his, not a previous life, in his same life, years before, Vavida was fighting on Krishna's side as Lord Ram. But now he became an enemy of that same personality, and he came out to fight. So here is Dvavida. Um, he was so angry. Narakasura, my friend, is killed. He wanted to get revenge. So he went to the area of Dwarka, and with all of his great powers that he once used in the service of the Lord, now he was using it simply to cause suffering to others. And although this story, from one perspective, is really funny, it's also very serious. That's the way Srimad Bhagavatam is. <laughs> I remember when Krishna book first, when I was in a brahmachari ashram. And we used to, every night, we used to drink hot milk and read Krishna book. That was the standard. Then we would all go to sleep. That was the regulation. We would all go to sleep before nine o'clock as a strict rule. 
which was quite nice, actually. <laughs> so we're all sitting on the floor, drinking this hot milk, and somebody would read Krishna book out loud, and we'd begin at the beginning and just read, you know, the next chapter, one chapter every night. And I'll never forget the night when we first read the chapter of the Vida Gorilla. I don't know what happened, but every word that the person was reading about the activities of the Vida Gorilla, everyone was laughing. I've never seen brahmacharis laugh like this. <laughs> They were laughing and laughing and laughing, and they were rolling on the floor. <laughs> and then the next thing Vivida did, they were laughing and laughing and rolling. Everybody, even me. <laughs> it's just incredible. It was like the, I've, I've never seen such enjoyable entertainment in my life. And I was born and raised in America, you know, there's Hollywood and all that stuff. And, and I've never seen people enjoying any type of entertainment like this, listening to the story of the activities of Vivida Gorilla. Now I read it and I think, God, we must have been really, like, very tuned in. <laughs> but he was doing such outrageous things. So powerful. And I remember we couldn't even, we could hardly sleep that night. <laughs> we were so surcharged. And the next morning, everyone was talking about their dreams of the Vida. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he. He was, a, he was an associate who had been instructed by Sugriva, <laughs> and Hanuma, a friend of Hanuman. <clears throat> but he wanted to avenge the death of his friend Naraka. And it describes he ravaged the land. He was setting fires to all the towns and villages and cities. He was burning the mines, and he was burning the goshalas where the cows were kept. He, would, he was so powerful, he would tear up mountains and use them to devastate the neighboring kingdoms, especially the area where Krishna lived. And it described, we're not going to go through it all because we just read it, but what was his power? He entered the ocean, and with the strength of 10,000 elephants, he churned the waters with his arms. Now, if you think you're strong, go to the ocean and start churning it. And <laughs> see what happens. But Vavita was so strong that all the shores of the ocean, they all flooded like, like tsunamis. He was creating tsunamis in all directions, huge waves that were just completely inundating all the coasts just by going like this. Can you imagine 10,000 elephants? That was the strength of each of his arms. And because he was so powerful, and he was so famous because of his power, he became so proud. He was envious of Lakshman. He didn't really do anything to Lakshman, but that was in his heart. And now Lakshman came as Balaram. And he actually expressed his envy and his pride. And as he's doing all these horrible things and torturing people, causing total misery to everybody in the whole area, wherever he went, 
he happened to hear Balaram at the Raivataka mountain dancing and singing with his with these beautiful young ladies who were his consorts. And that was intolerable for him. He couldn't tolerate seeing other people enjoy. That's the nature of envy. And we're reading about how he goes there. And here's Balaram himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> And Vivida is completely offending him, ignoring him. He's, he's doing obscene things right in front of these girls. And at the beginning, the girls, they didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, this big gorilla comes and starts doing these funny things. He was going, kila, 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 making <laughs> sounds. And at first they thought it was funny. They were laughing at him. But uh, I'm giving class again tomorrow, so we'll see what he does after saying kila, kila. <laughs> first it seemed kind of funny what he was doing, but then he becomes extremely offensive. But we'll discuss that subject tomorrow. Is there any questions? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, you are mentioning about Padam Padam Vipadam. Whatever we get, either success, failure, happiness, distress, we have to be careful that anytime anything can go wrong. And in this chapter it has been mentioned that about pride can come at any time. Pride or envy can come at any time and you are giving always a solution. You can subdue the pride only with having a very strong association and a very, very strong sadhana. If you keep a very strong sadhana and a strong association, this pride can be subdued. But I always have one fear in my mind and I've seen in my life also. That sometimes the pride and envy attack is so strong that even if you try to keep a strong association and you try to keep a good sadhana, yet the pride try to overcome you. Envy try to overcome you and you become completely helpless and you feel that nothing is working out. At that time, what to do? Because you are helpless at that time and you can't do any, any you don't have any other shelter. And it, due to that reason, your spiritual life becomes more and more disturbing, aparat becomes more and more, and the nectar of Krishna consciousness goes, become loose and loose and loose. And you feel it that nothing is working out. So at that juncture, what shelter we can take so that we come again on the track in devotional life? Hare Krishna. by keeping focused in the goal through hearing and chanting and proper association, we understand that when such anartas arise within us, we need to humble ourselves and take shelter. Otherwise, we will be consumed and controlled by those anartas. Material nature is very powerful. Maya is so strong. Through, the three, the, through these three modes of nature, she controls everything. It is described in Bhagavatam, so many examples. They're trying to cross over the temptations of Maya. The obstacles that she puts before us is like crossing a limitless ocean. But if we take shelter of Krishna, that ocean reduces to the size of the water contained in the hoof print of a calf. So it's not about us. It's about taking shelter of Krishna. That's the, that's the essence of bhakti taking shelter. 
Dushasana is like a demon within us that wants to exploit us, just like he was trying to exploit Draupadi. And there was nothing that Draupadi could do to protect herself, just like there's nothing we can really do to protect ourselves from the Dushasana of envy and greed and lust and anger and, and arrogance that's within us. But ultimately, she raised her arms and took shelter of Krishna, who's within his names. So we have to really, we have, it's not that she did nothing. She tried her very, very best. If she didn't really try her best, then Krishna wouldn't have been there for her. So we have to try the best with whatever Krishna's given us. But at the same time, ultimately we have to take shelter. We have to humble ourselves. So in such situations, we have two choice. Like Vivida, we can go kila kila, kila kila. <laughs> or we can, like Draupadi chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So that's the basis. Whether when you're in those situations, you say kila kila, or you chant the holy names. You chant Hare Krishna, then also it doesn't go then what to do. Then also it doesn't go, then you are helpless. You can't do anything at that juncture. At that time what to do? If you actually believe you're helpless like you're saying, then you'll really chant. So that's good. Vivida wasn't thinking himself helpless. So we should think ourselves helpless. Take shelter of Krishna. And Krishna consciousness is a process where we gradually make choices. We make the right choices when these difficulties come to us and gradually we become purified. I sometimes feel it that when we go and advance a little bit, spend more years in devotional life, we could understand that Krishna really demands more and more and more and more. And you are not able to give to the level which Krishna is demanding. And then you feel it, I cannot satisfy now Krishna's demand. And if I don't satisfy, I'll go in Maya. And if I go in Maya, again, I'll be in the same trap what I was before. So it becomes a very critical juncture, what to do at this time. <laughs> Be sincere, for sincere Krishna will be there to help us. Yes? Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you for a very, very wonderful class, Maharaj. Coming very valuable, very important point. In the Chaitanya Charitamrit also, uh, Kaviraj Goswami's brother uh, made an offense to uh, Meenaketana Ramdas, you know, an associate of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. <clears throat> so, Lord Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when we see their behavior, Lord Nityananda Prabhu's behavior is often uh, uh, difficult to understand for one who uh, looks at him with a material vision, you know. Uh, so, in the, in the same manner, it is said, the Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra, Vigyaha Bujai, you know, it is said. <clears throat> so, uh, in the path of uh, Krishna consciousness, uh, uh, especially in, in our uh, ISKCON society, uh, ever since uh, Shil Prabhupada established it and then Prabhupada left the world in, a very, in the very infant stage of our movement, you know, 1977. And subsequently, the several pitfalls that happened and 
several casualties happened in our society and due to which there is a widespread uh, uh, faithlessness amongst the practitioners and uh, uh, instead of having a childlike innocent and pure faith in the authority and the position of the leaders in the society so on one hand people uh, not reposing proper faith and uh, having a weak faith or uh, walking ahead with suspicion you know that causes people to grow very slow you know that impedes their progress also um, on the other hand uh, uh, one should not put blind faith also you know when one progresses in spiritual life so how how does one progress uh, by reposing proper faith uh, with proper enlightenment and understanding like this is don't surrender your intelligence surrender with intelligence so how how that is to be done without becoming offensive if we become fault finding then krishna will take our bhakti away or at least cover it for some time so wherever we see the right example wherever we see the right teachings we can understand that that's a manifestation of krishna we can put our faith there and where people have disappointed others faith due to their weakness or whatever if if we take that as an opportunity to just find fault with people then we will just, we will be engulfed by that fault finding propensity we should take precaution where there is deviation we should take pre- precaution not to be infected by that deviation but at the same time and, and we we may have to speak in such a way or act in such a way to protect others from that deviation but it should not be in a fault finding way we should not find pleasure in finding faults in other people's problems rather we should focus on the positive opportunities that we have shila prabhupad was a very perfect acharya he is a perfect acharya so his example can give us faith no matter what else happens wherever wherever we see devotees um our previous acharyas there's so many incredible stunning examples of pure devotional service we have the pastimes of krishna and the pastimes of chaitanya mahaprabhu this is where our ultimately our faith is in the past times and the teachings of the supreme personality of godhead and those who are actually embodying and and inspiring and teaching that message and wherever we see people among us that actually exemplify that and inspire that we should honor that we should respect that we should serve that and for whatever reason if there's you know people who are not then if we want to use that as an exa- as as an excuse just to be fault finders and lose faith then we're the ones that ultimately suffer so within this world there will always be those who are exemplary followers those who are not and those who tried to be but they had difficulties so for people who tried to be and have difficulties we should see the good in how they tried and feel sorry for them for their difficulties and at the same time you know keep keep a 
protective um, moods so that we're not affected by those difficulties. But it's important that we don't become spoiled by other people's problems. If other people have problems, we can easily either lose our faith or we can become extremely arrogant. If we respond in that way, then we're the losers. Amanina, amanadena. We should respect where there's good. And we should keep a respectful distance where there isn't. And sometimes we may have to speak or say some things that protect each other from, from that type of arrogance or that type of immorality. But the main thing is we should always be keeping our focus on where the example is. We should, we should protect ourselves and others from where the example isn't, but we should focus on where the example is. Because just finding faults with people who do wrong is not going to, in itself, help us. What's going to help us is taking shelter where we see things are right. That's where our focus should be. Does that answer your question? Hare Krishna. Because there will always be so many excuses for our faith to be disturbed. But the problem is we don't make any advancement by taking such excuses. If we want to make advancement, we have to choose to focus on those places where our faith can be nourished and empowered. And that's the difference between a devotee who makes progress and a devotee who doesn't. A devotee makes progress when we're we're all subjected to more or less the same kind of situations. But we take shelter of the positive. We take shelter with a respectful mood of, of where there is good example and where the flow of grace is coming to us. Yes. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Uh, so uh, that was a very uh, specific, beautiful answer I could get from you that uh, we want you to focus on the uh, good examples and the positive and uh, uh, from the negative, take a caution. <clears throat> now, uh, Duvida got a bad association from uh, uh, Bhaumasura and Bhaumasura got from Banasura, you said. Uh, so I, I have also come across in Chaitanya Chaitamrita that the bad association is a cause of all uh, complications uh, which come in, uh, in our devotee's life. So my question was, in, th- in this world, there is some information about somebody which we get, which is sure, which we know very well, we can see with our eyes. And there is some information which we know that it is wrong, it's false, absolutely false. And uh, people out of envy are cooking some stories. But uh, there is a third type of information which we are not sure. Uh, because of the age of internet, uh, so many things are being floated uh, about different people. And uh, somebody may plant it in our ears, you know, without our wanting it, you know. It may be somebody very senior to us, it may be equal to us, but uh, sometimes we uh, suddenly come across some information which has entered our heart, which we are not sure. And the person who is saying it, with what intention he said and all that, we don't know. But uh, that may remain like a thorn uh, in our mind and that uh, causes a perception seed. Uh, in our mind uh, towards the people uh, about whom we have heard, you know. 
So then that becomes like a radioactive element, you know. Uh, it may remain inside and start spreading some disease because that becomes the bad association. You know? So my question, uh, Maharaj was, in case something is planted by somebody, um, by your, even, our, even though we never wanted to hear such a thing, so how do we uproot it from our heart? And many a times we have uh, fear of clarifying it also. Because if we go and ask somebody something, they will say, oh, you have such a doubt or something like that. Or, uh, or somebody else may, you know, so there is a fear that uh, people should not think we are faithless. So many, you can ask many devotees, they will tell, uh, tell us nowadays, they hear many information from here and there, uh, from various uh, unauthoritative sources. We hear, so in case some information has come into our system, how to eradicate it? What is antibiotic to remove it? <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Raghunath Das Goswami, you should not speak the faults of others and you should not hear them. If it's really meant for us, it will come from a proper source, not just from the prajalpa and the internet and all of these other things. So, you know, it's if we open our ears and our hearts to be receptive to hear this kind of prajalpa, this kind of offensive um, talking, then we're going to be affected. So we actually shouldn't open our ears and hearts if, if, if it's something I'm really meant to understand. It will come from a very, from, from a source that is, is free of envy. Hmm? It will come from well-wishers, not from fault-finders. So if we're taking information from fault-finders, then we're subjecting ourselves. to a spiritual crisis. So we should hear Harikata from well-wishers. We should hear Harikata from the Holy Scriptures, from Prabhupada's books. We should hear Harikata from devotees who are, who are truly our well-wishers, who are... Rupa Goswami explains the nature of a truly advanced devotee is we have no tendency to find faults with others. The first defense to the holy name is to blaspheme devotees. The Veda was finding fault with Lakshman, and here he's finding fault with Balaram. Yes, Ramchandra Puri was finding fault with Lord Chaitanya and every single devotee because he made an aparad. So usually it's because of aparad that we have this fault-finding tendency. So we should, not, we should not open our hearts or ears to those places where there's going to be fault-finding. And if somehow or other we just happen to hear it, even against our will, then we should counteract it. by understanding the principle. And if there's something really meant for us to understand, then it will come in a mature and proper way to us, not just through all kinds of prajalpa and waves of talking. Does that answer your question? Hare Krishna. Yes, Draupadi Devi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, what is the parameter for elevated consciousness? Means we have seen in this story that even though his consciousness was elevated, but it was covered due to association. 
we come across uh, many shortcomings in our life and others lives and uh, we just cannot accommodate we want to love others but we cannot accommodate so how to become all accommodative even though with our shortcomings and the shortcomings of others or we can say conditionings hare krishna by studying shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita by chanting the holy names and by really being enthusiastic to serve and gradually our hearts become purified and we become more accommodating but we have to resist the propensity of fault finding if we if if we understand the value of humility then we will be very careful not to find faults with others shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur said i see faults in others because i myself am honeycombed with so many faults the world is often a mirror of our own consciousness so we really have to work on purifying ourselves in the association of people who really do inspire us and enliven us and people who are free of this propensity to find faults with others people who really love to glorify krishna and serve by shnavas that association will bring the best out in us and then when we bring the best out then krishna Krishna will help us to become accommodating. Does that answer your question? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai.